They have synchronized their energies to the rhythms of the universe. Their rituals are as highly developed as the most intricate mathematical equations. Seeing the world through Hopi eyes is seeing the world in balance. A thousand years ago, the Navajo, or Dene as they call themselves, migrated into the Southwest. According to their mythology, the Navajo came into existence through a circular opening called the Emergence Place. They settled within the four sacred mountains with the Hopi at the center. They, along with the Hopi, believed they were placed here to be caretakers of Mother Earth and to protect the sacred center of the continent. When the Navajo first came into the Southwest, they were hunters and gatherers moving with the seasons, living in simple shelters in small family groups. The Navajo Nation was a loose association of families and clans. They became shepherds. The Navajo believe that the sheep are gifts from the holy people. When it's cold and dark with snow, you wrap yourself up. And instead of forgetting the sheep, you stand by them with your teeth chattering. Long ago it was said, if your fingernails are frostbitten and your toenails are fallen off from herding sheep, only then do your sheep belong to you. With the wool from the sheep, the Navajo developed the art of weaving. Their rugs became their primary source of income in the modern world. The Navajo learned how to farm the desert from the Hopi, and corn became an important part of their lives. With farming, the people became rooted. They built permanent shelters called hogans, which opened to the east to greet the sun. I was born where there were no enclosures, and everyone drew a free breath. Big Mountain is a shrine to the Navajo who built their homes around its base. The people here are all related by blood, clan, or marriage. For generations, they have passed the land down from mother to daughter. Until now, half the Big Mountain people have been ordered to relocate. <laughs> I'm a woman from Big Mountain. In our minds, we love this mountain very much. From the beginning, it was put here for us. I have children. I have a husband. I have the continuing generations of my family. This land must not be stolen from the coming generations. What my older people say, it's right. And the way for us to have our culture keep on going and not to forget what our ancestors have brought to us. These ways were put here with us. 
We shake the pollen from the corn plant and offer it to the sun. The Holy Spirit protects us. We pray for ourselves in this way. The Navajo elders know the properties of plants and herbs, how to prepare them for different purposes. They know how to use crystals and prayers for healing, how to use planets and stars in planting. This is the heritage they pass down to their children in the sacred circle of life. The juice from these berries will cure your eyes if they're irritated. These berries are also used to make dyes. The dyes that belong to the white man color the wool right away. But with this, you have to let it sit for a long time before it will do that. These true elders, they, they don't need money to live. So, like sometimes they say money, to us money is nothing. Then they don't care for modern things like new materials or nice homes. They don't care for those because they know that, that those won't last long. This grinding stone was put here for us a long time ago. Washington does not recognize these ways. If he were to look at these things, he would think them of no value. But to us they are holy. Washington says, go away, go someplace else. Go walk among people in places you don't know. We are not hard enough to survive in places that we are unfamiliar with. If we leave here, we'll grieve for our homeland and it'll kill us. It's almost as if they've lost a portion of their soul when they no longer can return to, to that land. The land that has really defined them to themselves, their connection to their family, to the, to the livestock, to the shrines, to the mountains that are around them. Um, if they lose this, then they are losing the thing that is most precious to them, which we might call our soul. I really wish that Navajo leaders and Navajo people generally would take a look at this and say we don't like it. Uh, it's rotten, it, uh, it's unfair, we wish they had done it some other way. But we're Americans like everyone else, and we can uh, change if we have to, and we'll find some more land that our kids will think is just as good as this land, and get on with it. I don't know who these white people are. I hear they come from someplace across the water, and now they're telling everyone what to do. Indians have been paying with their lives for the white man's greed since the arrival of Columbus. White settlers moving west considered the land theirs for the taking. They demanded the Indians be killed or confined. An officer in the United States Cavalry wrote, By the colonization and subjugation of the Navajo tribe, we gain for civilization their whole country. There is evidence of gold fields, of veins of silver, and the richest copper. I have come to kill Indians, and I believe it is right and honorable to use any means under God's heaven. Colonel Kit Carson burned Navajo crops, slaughtered 